Hey yo everyone, this is part two of a three-part series on maze generators in Minecraft. In part one, I went over 14 different algorithms and ranked them on the quality of the mazes they generate and how feasible they are to implement in Minecraft. In this episode, I'll be showing off a new algorithm that I've developed specifically for Minecraft. And in part three, I'll be showing off that new algorithm built with redstone. So make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss that final episode. A few months ago, YouTuber Captain Luma released a video going over a new algorithm they had developed while trying to implement the Aldous Broder algorithm in Minecraft. This algorithm, now called Origin Shift, had some tweaks that made it work much better in Minecraft. After seeing that video, I wanted to develop my own algorithm that was tailor-made for redstone. There are three main things to balance when implementing a maze generator. The complexity of the algorithm, the quality of the maze, and the time required to generate the maze. On one hand, the Aldous Broder algorithm is very simple and generates good mazes, but takes a very long time to finish. On the other hand, you have the binary tree algorithm, which is also simple and runs very fast, but generates boring mazes. Most algorithms fall somewhere in between those two. Captain Luma had already found a way to effectively modify the Aldous Broder algorithm to be faster. I decided to start from the other side, trying to modify the binary tree algorithm to generate better mazes. As a brief recap of the binary tree algorithm, you start with all walls in the maze closed. Then for each cell, you randomly choose to either open the wall to the west or to the south. The cells along the south wall always open to the west, and the cells along the west wall always open south, with the cell in the southwest corner not opening any of its walls. As you can see, it generates very boring mazes, but it has the benefit that each cell can operate independently from each other. One analogy I came up with to explain why this algorithm works is the idea of water running downhill. If we have our maze set up on this slope here, binary tree is effectively saying each cell can choose to open into any neighboring cell at a lower altitude. And if we follow that rule and generate a maze, you can see we get the very distinct binary tree pattern. So from here, I thought of ways to, using this analogy, make better mazes. The most obvious next step would just be to move where the lowest point is. If I move the absolute minimum to the middle of the maze and generate, you can see that we get basically four binary tree mazes that are all connected at a center point. So it's not really any better than just a plain binary tree maze, but it is something different. The next idea I came up with was this zigzag pattern, where every cell has a lower neighbor to the south, but then it alternates going east and west on whether or not you're going lower or higher. If we generate this maze, you can see that the result looks a lot like the sidewinder. The bottom row is completely connected, and there's a bunch of horizontal passageways, and you can always get from the top to the bottom without having to backtrack back up. So again, this isn't really that much better of a maze. It seems like it might be a faster way to do something like Sidewinder, um, but it got me thinking of you know, different curves that would connect every single cell in the maze, where there's exactly one cell at each altitude. So the next idea I came up with was this spiral, where there's the midpoint, or the lowest point, is still in the middle, but you have a spiral pattern all around the outside to get there. If I generate a maze here, you can see that this is the first one that actually starts looking a bit more complicated. There's still fairly easy to solve, but getting through the middle section has 
you know, more possibilities for getting turned around. And there's not as clear cut of, we just move in this single direction and we'll always be able to find the center. With this spiral, the next thought I had was using a different space filling curve that had more twists and turns in it to generate a maze. And that's where I found the final algorithm I settled on, what I'm calling the Hilbert look ahead algorithm. So we have this curve in a Hilbert curve pattern where it fills the entire square with this you know, very distinctive zigzag pattern where you're pretty much constantly changing which direction the curve is going. And if we generate a maze from this system, I think you'll agree that it is a much more complicated maze than any of the previous ones we've looked at without being more computationally difficult. Each cell still only needs to know about its direct neighbors, which ones are higher and lower, and each cell makes a single decision. But the maze we get out of it has many more possibilities for what it can look like. To give a slightly more formal definition of this algorithm, you start by giving every cell in the maze an index. To assign this index, you follow the Hilbert curve through the maze, assigning each cell the next index up. Then, for each cell in the maze, you choose a random neighbor that has a lower index, and you open the wall into that neighboring cell. And that's it. If you follow that, you'll have a maze where every cell is connected to each other cell in the maze by exactly one path. What makes this algorithm ideal for Minecraft is that each cell still operates completely independently. If you do the first phase of figuring out which neighboring cells each cell can open up into ahead of time, each cell only needs to make a single decision at runtime to generate a new maze. The main drawback to this maze is that it only works on square mazes where the side lengths are a power of two. This can be worked around by choosing a different space filling curve instead of the Hilbert curve, such as the piano curve, which works on squares with side lengths that are powers of three, or the Gilbert curve, which is a generalization of the Hilbert curve for any 2D rectangle. That's it for the explanation of how this algorithm works. Make sure to subscribe to catch the third and final episode where I go over the final maze in Redstone. But just as a bit of a teaser for that, wanna watch me generate a maze? Wanna watch me do it again?